Hey everybody, Leslie here, and today I'm going to talk to you about a really common anti-acne prescription medication known as tretinoin, Accutane, Roaccutane, Claris, and how it actually can lead to premature gray hair and hair loss in up to 13% of all patients. So, um, what is tretinoin or tretinoic acid? It's actually a derivative of vitamin A, and the reason why it is so popular is because it causes excessive shedding of skin cells. So why is that important? Well, if you have severe cystic acne, you are trying to get the inflamed layers off uh, to reveal new, healthier skin. Um, there are two ways to take uh, tretinoin. You can take it topically, like benzoyl peroxide, and that is perfectly, seems to be perfectly fine. But if you take it orally, that is where the problems seem to occur. And there are some that um, take it sublingually underneath the tongue, where it goes into a very, um, a main vein underneath the tongue, gets into the body right away, and bypasses the GI tract. No matter how it gets in the body though, once it is in the body, it has global or systemic effects everywhere on the skin. And it can even have effects on the mucosa where some patients will experience gastrointestinal or GI upset because the mucosa is drying out. So I mentioned that the shedding of skin will happen but what happens is the severe drying from the scalp uh, down to the toes, everywhere. You might experience itchy skin. You might experience burning eyes. Around uh, eight to nine percent of patients have reported um, very sore eyes because, of course, um, the eyes get very dry. You can experience um, exceedingly dry lips. As a matter of fact, a number of studies that I looked at. 100% of patients taking it said that their lips were so excessively dry that they had to wear a special lip salve. Um, so with regard to hair, what it will do is it will actually take hair from the growth phase known as the antigen phase and put it into the telogen or shedding phase. And uh, it, it is going to take that hair follicle and it's going to just sort of propel it out. Not literally propel it out, but it will cause it to just loosen up. And men who take Accutane report, say a month later, that they notice that then the hair comes out. So it won't happen immediately. The hair has to go from the growth phase to a sort of resting phase before it gets to that shedding phase. So why did I look into this? Well, a number of men have gotten in touch with me. I haven't had any women yet, but a number of men have gotten in touch with me to say that they can't figure out why they are getting premature gray hair and hair loss at the same time. It's not something that they see in their siblings or in their male relatives. And as you know, whenever people ask me about what could be causing, what the root cause of their gray hair is, I will usually ask them to talk to their doctor about getting some blood panels, urine panels done, just to see what's going on in the body, to see if there are any vitamin, mineral, or antioxidant deficiencies, if there are any underlying chronic infections like H. pylori or candida or strep, um, or if there are hormonal imbalances like thyroid issues that could be leading to this. And with all of these men, I couldn't figure it out until I asked, are you on any medications? And then one by one, they all said, yes, in the last year or the last two years, I've been on uh, tretinoin or Accutane, Roaccutane, however you have it. So one of these, uh, one of these nice people has allowed me to, uh, to show you some of our conversation. And in the first one, um, this individual says, I first noticed a few grays when I was 18, so about three to four years ago, and I'm 22 now. He also says that he began taking 
isotretinin for three years between the ages of 16 and 19. And then he did a six month course of Accutane when he was 20. He noticed a few gray hairs on the isotretinin, but after he finished that course of Accutane at age 20, he says he started to get lows. And it was something that in particular, he said that his barber happened to notice this, that he was getting so many. And I've got a photo of what he looked like um, beforehand, and you can see his hair is quite dark brown. And then afterwards, uh, this is after, this is before the Accutane uh, in the la at age 20. And then afterwards, he was getting some hair loss here and getting gray hair, and so he's cut it very short to basically, um, you know, sort of obscure the fact that this is happening. But he also says, uh, like so many uh, of these individuals on this, that there were quite a lot of side effects. And I think as a mother, I really would like individuals to know about this. It's, I want other mothers and other young people who are considering this, please, please, please think about what your root cause is rather than trying to just treat the acne. The acne is there for a reason. It's a red flag and it's saying something internally is wrong. And if we can determine what that something is, it's better for your body. Because if you take Roaccutane, 13% of patients saying that they have hair loss, that's a high proportion, a high proportion of individuals. And if you are self-conscious because of the cystic acne, I wonder if also hair loss will just compound your problems. So this individual says, he talks about the side effects and his own advice to viewers. The side effects of me being on Accutane were actually quite horrible. I would definitely advise people to avoid it at all cost. I had extremely dry lips, so dry that I'd have to layer my lips with prescription cream every night so that they wouldn't crack. My eyes were constantly sore where they were so dry. I had no energy at the gym. My joints felt very painful and that led to me injuring myself. My scalp was constantly sore. My skin was so dry. Obviously the problems with my hair as well. And to top it all off, my skin cleared up a lot quicker from changing my diet than actually being on Accutane. I finished the course of Accutane about a year ago now, and my skin has been good ever since, but solely down to the diet change rather than the Accutane itself. Now in that individual's case, he discovered that his root cause problem was that he was on these whey protein shakes and having a lot of dairy, and he had seemed to have an allergy to dairy. So Accutane can be life-changing. For individuals there's no question and there will be appropriate times to use it but please go in knowing exactly what the risks are 13 percent in one monograph which was for the prescription drug claris um, and in other studies um, i've got one study here it's a meta-analysis which means that they looked at all the studies done on tretinoin claris accutane roaccutane and they um, specifically were looking for hair loss across all of these drugs. And they discovered in this study that, um, whereas Clara said it was 13%, they found a slightly lower amount, um, but this had to do with the dose. So as you recall, the individual in the photos that I showed you, he said he had been on it for three years. That's actually a very, very long time. Now, um, Vitamin A is a fat soluble vitamin, which means it will build up in your fat tissues and you can't excrete it easily. So what they generally try to do is they give you a prescription and they start you low and then they titrate you up and you're going to build up a certain amount of vitamin A in the tissues to help with the skin. Um, what they discovered in this study called comparing the frequency of isotretinone induced hair loss was that at the um, the sort of lower doses, which were less than half a milligram per kilo of body weight per day, that the percentage of hair loss was two was two uh, sorry three point two percent, and 
when you increased it above the half a milligram per kilo of body weight per day, then that rate went up to 5.7%. Given that there are a million prescriptions of this drug given out every single year in the United States alone, I'm thinking these are high percentages. So, um, you know, 13% with the Claris monograph, that is 130,000 men, women who are experiencing this hair loss. Um, the meta-analysis is showing at the higher dose that it would be around 57,000 people who are experiencing this kind of hair loss. So please do um, think carefully before you decide to resort to this. I know it's very painful, but there are other therapies that can be done and always look for the root cause and remove that root cause, then work on seal healing the skin and healing the body uh, as a whole system. I hope that this video has been helpful. If you liked it, please consider giving it the thumbs up. If you'd like more like it, please hit the subscribe button. And as ever, thank you so much for viewing. I really appreciate all of you guys and uh, see you next time.